We've traveled thousands of miles, and not all of it by jet ski, to what could legitimately be called paradise. St. Pete in Clearwater, Florida is famous for its white sandy beaches, fresh seafood and gorgeous sunsets, but less so for its unexpected cultural quirks, one of which is an incredible brewing scene. So for the next few weeks we're going to show you just how spoiled the region is for its amazing beer, world-class breweries and even unique local beer styles. This week we're going to show you the best bars, tap rooms and uh, shuffleboard places to drink in St. Pete, Clearwater and everywhere in between. It would be easy to think of these places as just beach resorts, and many are, but as we explored we found it all goes so, so much deeper than that. The whole peninsula is spoiled for things to see, eat and drink, and it also has a rich history to tap into, as we discovered in our video with Greenbench. It has all kinds of unique culture and mixed identities, including amazing street art, delicious food, and of course killer scenery. And these are our highlights. So this is where to drink, and this starts as everyone else who comes here now has to at Green Bay. So as we said in the intro, the first place you have to come is Green Bench. I mean, these guys are world class across so many different styles. I'm blown away. I mean, I didn't know what to expect when we got here because to be honest, I didn't know that much about Green Bench, but they're killing it on most fronts. Uh, this is all clean beer over here, and they've got all the sort of sour stuff over there. And yeah, so they've got two sites. One's making all their clean beer and a couple of, um, uh, I, I guess, like mixed fermentation beers over here. And then the barrel stuff is happening over there. Everything we had at the barrel space was stellar. The raspberry Amazing. beer, when I was drinking it, I thought I was about to bite down on pips. Like, it was that real, the raspberry flavors in it. Alice. Um, Alice. That's All kinds of Alice it. we've sampled yeah. this evening. It doesn't matter who Alice is, because, well, Alice is from here now. Um, yeah, and it's a really cool space as well. Music's a bit questionable occasionally, but a really nice space to hang out, really great garden. Uh, they shot they these, uh, these are from Ikea, these lamps. They shot them with shotguns. Bow! 12 gauge shotguns. Brad went on about shotguns for a while from there. So after a swift Cuban sandwich at Bodega across the street, let's move down to the Independent, a beer bar just a few hot minutes walk from Green Bench. So one of the great things about drinking in some pee is air conditioning. Air conditioning, because <laughs> it's very, very warm for a couple of British boys. Yeah. Um, and another great thing is it's, it's it has these areas that are quite condensed where there's amazing breweries, yeah. tap houses, all kinds so, of stuff. So we're in what's called the Edge District, about seven blocks, uh, which has this amazing place. It's called the Independent. So it's like the craft beer bar on the strip. Uh, really cosmopolitan, like lots of Belgian and German beers. Look at Brad's silly little coaster. <laughs> so within walking distance, there's Green Bench. There's Overflow, yep. Cycle, which is just outside of the Edge District, uh, but only seven or eight blocks. Um, and then some other really great beer bars, a weird, looks like a frat party going on a couple of, uh, couple of doors down, uh, which Brad was very excited about. Um, and then the other area is way up in Clearwater, not on the beaches, but slightly in, where you can, uh, you can visit Woodwright, uh, Dunedin and Seventh Son, all within walking distance, which is quite rare in America. Quite often you're gonna have to drive between them, so you need theirs or somebody can only have one. Um, whereas these are all within walking distance. So when you come here, it's best to stay there or get a taxi to those places and stick in those areas. Party time. Party town. <laughs> Not far from there again, still in downtown St. Pete, is Three Daughters. These guys are growing fast and even supply Disneyland, which kind of makes sense when you see the tap room. It's perfect for families or groups of friends out for the day, thanks to the entertainment laid on and the variety of drinks. Here we are at Three Daughters, which I think is probably the biggest of the, the, the craft breweries. Not quite Cigar City, definitely not Yungling, but you know, big place in the Bay Area. Um, I think about, I think she said 17,000 barrels, uh, mostly making like West Coast uh, style beers, beautiful citrusy blonde, which is what we're drinking here, which is their flagship and the, 
the kind of six you want on the beach. They're also making wine and <laughs> so, yeah, hard crazy ciders, ciders, wines, yeah, all kinds seltzers, of stuff. lots of unusual stuff. So yeah. it's great for people who don't love beer and pretty good for the people that love beer as well, obviously. And they do live music. There's games on every single table. Sequence is a great game. I've just realized what that is. <laughs> um, and Giant Connect 4, if you're of that persuasion. Um, and you get to be sort of in the heart of it as well. So you've got the live music right next to the, the fermenting tanks. It's a cool, uh, really unusual place to be to be drinking your beers. Yeah, they've, um, got, a, they've got a second bar through there, which has got the uh, the lab. Uh, yeah. You can look into the lab while they're analyzing all the stuff. Watching which the lab rats really drinking cool. the beer. That's what they do yeah. in there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and loads of games in there like shuffleboard, ping pong. So it's a really cool place to sort of hang out for a couple of hours, particularly in the evening once it's cooled off a bit and there's a live music playing uh, and drinking a beach blonde, which is a banger. Cheers. The mention of shuffleboard reminded us that not far away is the oldest shuffleboard club in the world. So after a few more beers, we headed there to play and take advantage of the BYOB vibe by picking up some cycle crawlers. Now, this was nothing like the tabletop game you might have seen. Not only is it on a much bigger scale, but it's much harder too. You have to get your pucks right in the triangles, touch a line, and you don't score. So things got heated. You got some trubs coming. You're in trubs. No way, bro. No way. I'm taking you down. I'm undefeated. So a bit of an unusual where to drink uh, for the Craft Beer Channel. We've done some pretty weird places, but this has to be the weirdest. Uh, we are here at the Shuffleboard Club in St. Pete, uh, the oldest Shuffleboard Club in the world. I'm uh, not sure that's too hard, not sure how many of them there are. Uh, but this is like floor shuffleboard, which I think is the original, not the tabletop stuff uh, that I constantly get hustled at in craft beer bars. Um, so Brad is about to uh, puck me. You've got to get it into these triangles um, for certain points. Brad just beat me, so I'm, I'm off the table. Um, What's really cool about this place is Fridays is completely free to play and it's bring your own booze. So we went via cycle and got ourselves some massive crowlers of IPA and uh, a coffee stout, um, which I'm currently buzzing off, which is why I'm talking really fast. Just got pucked. Um, so yeah, come down here, bring your own beer, like Green Bench, Cycle. These guys are really close. You can get amazing beer and have a great time. It's a proper family party atmosphere. Um, whoo! You're not so accurate when you're playing the game though, are you? Things kind of went downhill from there. So here's a beautiful clear water sunset instead. In the morning, we decided we needed to cool off, nurse some puck wounds and relax before hitting the beer trail again. The St. Pete Peninsula has some of the best beaches in the world, ranging from the big and busy lined with restaurants and bars to smaller and more rural ones like the beautiful Honeymoon Beach, where Brad and I spent a romantic hour and rescued a tortoise. Feeling all loved up again, we drove to Arcane, winner of Florida's best new brewery in 2018 and big lovers of the Florida Vice and Pastry Stout. So if you're in Florida and you're into beer, you have to have some Florida Vice. Uh, They've got this, this whole great wacky style. Yeah, like, completely unique to here, which is, I guess, a Berliner Vice, but heavily fruited. Very fruity. Yeah, well beyond what you might consider a fruited Berliner Vice. It is, it, it's half fruit, it's almost like a smoothie. Um, in which they put lots of seasonal or not seasonal fruits, herbs, spices. This is a coffee and cherry. Um, and one of the best places to have them is this place, Arcane. Yeah. Um, which is part metal, part Lionel Richie fan club. Yeah, it's, we're in like a sort of mini mall. It's, I mean, it's, I've been to lots of different breweries. It's quite a unique brewery. Yeah, it really is. In that we're in like a shopping center, essentially. And they've taken over this amazing space um, and it really has the character of the guys that are running it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking cool, it's metal, like you say, it's a bit Lionel Richie, <laughs> it's cheesy as fuck, it's a little bit Wayne's World, is what yeah, I Yeah, there's say. a Wayne's world vibe to this, 100%. Um, and it's cool. Yeah. Um, and the beers are delicious on this tiny little three barrel kit, just making, like, they've got... How many sours? Like, there's like 10 sours. No, nine sours on. Crazy. And then a bunch of hobby stuff and some big like pastry stouts as well. It's like all the fun you could possibly have as a brewer. They're just throwing stuff at it, thinking about these recipes and what might be cool and seeing if it works. Um, it's a really kind of adventurous, really fun little brewery. 
um, and the, the owners are great and that's always important. So yeah, head to Arcane in Largo, which is sort of halfway between Clearwater and St. Pete, so it'll break up yeah. your little crawl It's, just, it's like very up a nicely. bit from St. Pete, isn't up it? Up a bit, that's up the direction you need. We'll see you at the next spot. Cheers. That next spot was Pair of Dice, a brewery that didn't look like too much from the outside, but was where we had the best Florida vice of the trip. A blueberry cobbler inspired beer that was so good that Brad interrupted our interview to express his delight. <laughs> in fact, all the beers we tried were deliciously balanced and nuanced, and we think that these guys are a bit of a hidden gem. In the very near vicinity to Arcane, uh, where we just were, you can also go to Pair of Dice, where we just had probably the best Florida vice we've had on this trip. Of the trip, yeah. without a doubt. And uh, the, f the thing for me, which made it so special was the, the balance of it. Yep. And the fact that they're using all Floridian real fruit yep. rather than purees, base, dried stuff, absolutely, extracts, Kool-Aid, whatever, all the crazy stuff we, cool we've incident. met yeah. along the journey. This is legit. Yeah, and with some cinnamon as well, which makes it into this gorgeous blueberry pie kind of thing. Um, we've also got their strawberry blonde, so again, it's local fruit being used. Um, and all the beers are really good for the climate as well. There's also the, the honey cream. Yeah, I did yeah. get it right. Clear water honey cream. <laughs> <laughs> Made with Florida honey and orange blossom. Kind Just, of tastes like a lager, doesn't it? It's really crushable. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind uh, of like a, a cream ale. Really, really dry, really refreshing and pale, but also really floral uh, on the aroma. Uh, and it's a cool little space as well. Great people uh, making some really technically, really well balanced and delicious beer. A <laughs> um, little bit less full on than the Arcane beers, but really, really great. Before leaving St. Pete entirely behind, we took a walking tour of the amazing street art we'd seen around. It's become a defining part of St. Pete's identity and brings artists from all over the world. Even the brewers were getting in on it. So we didn't know this place existed, but we did a walking art tour. We did, which was awesome. Yeah, in which we were told that the outside of this brewery is 3D. It's more three, it's, the world is 3D. Yes, that's the true. The artwork <laughs> jumps out from you when you put these special glasses on. Yeah. It's 3D. Yeah. Also, Which, you look awesome in the glasses, so that's why oh, we're still yeah. wearing them. Sadly, we had to return the glasses and head off up the coast to Dunedin. Where St. Pete felt modern, cosmopolitan and bursting at the seams, Dunedin has a wonderful village feel with lots of great little bars, restaurants and some awesome food. We were there for the beer though, and what better place to start exploring than one of the places that started it all. We're at Seventh Sun, one of the older breweries in this scene, uh, and one of the breweries that I think have inspired a lot of the other brewing that's been going on around here, along with Rap or maybe Cigar City. Um, so these guys, Seventh Sun, have this tiny little site, uh, but they've just expanded to a much bigger site in Tampa because the beers they're making are incredible. They were one of the inspirations behind the Florida Vice scene, made some great Belgian beers around the start and continue to. So check out this, it's one of the breweries that has kind of sparked off this scene here in Central Florida uh, and it's an amazing little brewery to see in its original environment. After a tour and a few beers with founder Devon, she suggested we take a stroll up the road to Woodwright Brewing Co. Founder Eunice Painter was by no means ready for guests, but welcomed us warmly to her former woodworking shop, now a German-focused microbrewery. She pulled off the plastic sheets to pour us a flight of dialed-in lagers, a Kolsch and some stunning Hefeweizens before showing us the main woodwork shop, which now doubles as a gig venue. It was pretty magical and we didn't really want to leave, but lunch at the Dunedin Brewery was calling, so we hit the hot pavement once again. Down at Dunedin Brewery, which is, I believe, the oldest microbrewery in Florida. So says the, uh, the bar mat there. The beer map was right, and you could see the history in Dunedin Brewery's stickers, flags, the people, the beers. It was well lived in and well loved. 
Yeah, it's the uh, the first continuously operating microbrewery. Long, longest. Longest. Continually operating, operating microbrewery in Florida. Yeah. So in the whole state. N- 96 was their first brew. 96. Um, so, yeah, 23 years they've been going, which, you know, considering people don't really consider Florida a, a, a home of great brewing, which it definitely is, yeah. that's amazing that they've been doing it for that long. Um, and we've just been handed a bottle of uh, a raspberry barrel aged sour that was made in 2007. 2006, no, 2006. Oh yeah, and then bottled in 2007. Yeah. yeah. So lots of history and they've been doing exciting stuff for a long time. Um, and also lots of other amazing retro things like a black IPA. <laughs> Hashtag Bipper comeback. Pretty That's good. It's going to be a thing. Yeah. It's great to meet, you know, the brewer and his father. He was, he was the brewer also. Yeah. And see, you know, that it's a family business and um, I think you get a sense of of their character in being in this space. It's yeah. quite quite a cool, eccentric Yeah. And bar. the 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 influence that they've taken from all around the world, particularly their Scottish influences is there, but also, you know, everyone we spoke to mentioned Dunedin as, as important in them opening their brewery and even you know the guy who founded Cigar City worked here for a bit you know this is central to everything that's happened in St Pete, Clearwater um, and Dunedin and even Tampa Bay as a whole so it's a really cool place to come to see where it began um, and where there's still some great stuff some great beer some great food and some great people all come together in one space which is what I love specifically about American tap rooms where all three of those things come together. Finishing where the whole scene began, we are at the end of our St Pete and Clearwater Odyssey. There was so much we had to miss out of this video. We could have put in Rat Brewing, Crooked Thumb's delicious margarita beer, and the amazing Dubine Brewery, which all appear in our other Tampa Bay videos. We could have shown you the incredible restaurants we went to, all the tacos Brad ate, and the prawns and club sandwiches that Johnny inhaled. It's tough to sum up exactly how much we fell in love with the place, but suffice to say, we'll be back, and mostly for the beer. Uh, I had no idea how beautiful Florida was. I also had no idea how high quality beer was being made here. Yeah, it's, and the range as well, like so many different kinds of beers. So many amazing places, like the actual venues, the towns we visited. Yeah, it's just really magical what they've achieved here uh, in only a couple of years now, four, five, six years these breweries have been going. Yeah, it's incredible. It's such a young scene. Yeah. But um, but it rarely feels like it. Um, and, you know, if you're looking for somewhere that's a beach holiday that has incredible beer, I can't think, I don't know of another place in the world that would be able to offer this. Um, it is truly spectacular. Guys, it's been a pleasure being in St. Pete's. Which way? It's Mexico! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs>